please rise for the call to worship. There are many alternatives to our being here this morning. There are so many false gods vying for our allegiance. Celebrate the choices faith calls us to make. We rejoice that two and three and more of us are gathered together to engage in worship and to prepare for service. Praise be to our Creator God. As your son Jesus went faithfully to the synagogue, God of Israel and of the church, so we come to this house of prayer Grant that we may have our minds and hearts opened and filled with the Holy Spirit as we hear your word and offer our service to you and your people. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen.
Our scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Those who receive you are also receiving me, and those who receive me are receiving the one who sent me. Those who receive a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Those who receive a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. I assure you that everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to these little ones because they are my disciples will certainly be rewarded. Our pelican offering this week or this month is going to help the cost of VBS, so I would invite the children to come forward now, collect our pelican offering and come forward. Well, good morning, guys, and welcome. What's this? You guys know what this is? It is a welcome mat. You're right. And where do you usually... You have one of those at your house? Is it by your door, by your front door? Very cool. That's where we usually see those, right? Is it our houses? Sometimes people have other things, too. But, so why do we have a welcome mat? Why do we have that mat at our house? Exactly. We welcome them into our home. There's a second reason we have them too. What's the other reason we have mats? To get dirt off of exactly. I know if I don't wipe my feet, my wife tells me about it when I track mud into the house. Yeah, your mom gets mad too. Yep. Yeah, I get that. But we do well use it to welcome people. It's so that when people come to our house, they'll know that we want them there because that's what welcome means. It means we want you to be here. Okay? So... We definitely welcome people into our house. Where else do we want to welcome people, though? Into our lives. Into our lives. What a nice answer. I love that answer. Into our church and at school, too, right? But into our lives is a great answer because that encompasses all that. So we want to do that. We want to welcome people into every part of our life. Because, like Jesus said in the scripture that Lauren read, when we welcome people, we're welcoming Jesus, too. And that's something we all want to do, right? We want to get Jesus into our life and have a good, good relationship with Jesus. So I got a challenge for you this week. When you're out there doing whatever you do this week, I want you to be welcoming to everybody you run into. And have an, an imaginary welcome mat that you lay out for everyone that comes in contact with you, even the ones that really annoy you. I want you to be welcoming to them because they're out there. We know they're out there. So I want you to be welcoming to them. If you've got brothers and sisters, be welcoming and, and let them know that you're glad that they're there, okay? Can you try to do that? It's hard, but can you try? All right, let's pray. Dear God, help us to remember that when we refuse and forget to welcome others into our homes and our school and our church and our lives, that it's really the same as not welcoming you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys.
you now please turn in your hymnal to number 432 and join in our hymn of the word, Hezu, Hezu. Welcome. Welcome. That word appears six times in our scripture today. So I think it must be important, right? I mean, six times in one little bit of scripture. And here in our scripture, the Greek word is, that's translated as welcome is dakomai, which can be translated as either welcome or as receive. But when it's used as receive, there's a connotation of hospitality, which is why it's so good to translate it as welcome. So like I said uh, earlier, lots of us have welcome mats at our house. Some of us have little plaques on the wall by the door. At the parsonage, there's a little frog reading a book that says welcome on it. So we welcome people in lots of different ways. So does anyone here speak a different language other than English? Any brave people? Yes. What language do you speak? That is... That is awesome. Can you say welcome in a couple languages for me? Randy. Nice. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. In Swedish, it would be welcome. Welcome? Welcome in Swedish. Very good. Yes. I'm not going to try to do that, but that was beautiful. <laughs> she gave it to us in Thai, and I won't try to do that. Yes? Uh, ni, hao. ni hao. I know ni hao. That's Mandarin, right? That means konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Thank you. Yes?
Thank you. Dos Padanya. Dos Padanya is Russian. Thank you. All right, so everybody in here, join with me. Welcome. welcome. You guys do that really well. You can all say welcome really good. Now comes the hard part. Because we can say it, but then there's the doing part. Being welcoming. We add that little I-N-G, those three little letters, changes it totally. Makes it so much harder. It's easy to say welcome, right? Sometimes it can be much more difficult to be welcoming. Let me tell you a story. When I was younger, much younger, in my 20s, I had long hair. I don't mean kind of long. I mean long like I grabbed my ponytail about right here. I had long hair. And I hadn't been to church for a while. I'd kind of drifted away. So one day I decided I was going to surprise my dad, and I went to my dad's church. And I showed up, and I sat in the back, about second row in. And I did not have my hair in a ponytail that day, so my hair was kind of all over, and I was wearing holy jeans and a T-shirt. And I sat down there, and people kind of went away from me. And they didn't talk to me. Now, I'm really glad that I sat in the back, and my dad does what I do. I didn't get to you today because I was running late. I apologize. But I like to go visit people before the service. And my dad did that as well. So my dad came in, and he saw me, and he came over and was crying, gave me a big hug because he hadn't seen me for a while. And so we had this great welcoming there. And it was amazing, the change in people's attitudes at that point. Suddenly, everybody was welcoming to me because they knew I was the pastor's son. But till that point, they just did this. Now let me tell you about the other end of that spectrum. Last Sunday was my first Sunday here. And Marva came in and she sat down over here with our grandson, Colbin. You may have seen him over there. He was the cute little guy that was there with, with my beautiful wife. And she came in and she sat down. And this nice lady went over and introduced herself and welcomed her and told her how glad she was that they were here. Well, then Marva came up and served communion with me and went back and sat down. And at the end of the service, that same lady went over and told her, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize you were the pastor's wife. <laughs> and Marva and I, as we talked about that, we were like, there was no reason for her to apologize because she did exactly what we want to do, right? She was welcoming. She had no idea that my beautiful wife was my wife's. She just knew that there was a person here she didn't know, and she went and welcomed her. So that's the opposite end of the scale. Now, maybe Marva's just more approachable than me. I don't know. She cleans up pretty good. And she looks like most of us here, and I didn't look like most of us here when I had my long hair going everywhere. But I've got to ask, what if somebody came in who didn't look like us? What if somebody who came in and smelled of alcohol. Or somebody came in and you could tell just by looking at this person that they were on drugs. What if that person came in and they didn't look or act anything like we do? What if they were different? Would you be as welcoming to them as you were to Marva and I? If somebody came in and you didn't know them and they came in and they sat down in Sunday school with you, would you be as welcoming? if they weren't like you? It's a tough question. If somebody came in and they hadn't accepted Christ and didn't have a clue about what we did here, would you welcome them? If somebody came in and they looked like they were homeless and they sat down, would you go over and would you welcome them? Would you offer to help them? Would you ask them, what can I do for you today? Or would you tell them, hang on, let me go get the pastor. We pay him for this. It's a real question. And it's one that I hope you will ask yourselves. Are you going to do it yourself? Well, let me tell you. You're supposed to do it yourself. It's what you're called to. Listen again to this familiar scripture from Matthew 25, 35 to 40. 
Jesus says, I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then those who were righteous will reply to him, Lord, when did we feed you when you were hungry? Or when did we see you thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you as a stranger and welcome you? Or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will reply to them, I assure you that when you have done it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it to me. We ask, do you believe this is the word of God? Do you believe that this is full of truth? That, the, that is what is in here is truth? I'm not asking if you believe it's all full of facts because some theology doesn't lead itself to believing it's necessarily fact, but it is absolutely the greatest book of truth I've ever seen. So do you believe this contains great truths? Okay. There's an awful lot of yeses. Are you sure? Anybody want to back up on that? Because if this is truth, if this is truth, then you must know that you have to welcome everyone who comes into your life just as you would Jesus. Because when you welcome them, you're welcoming Jesus. And when you're not, you're not. And I don't think any of us want to close the door on Jesus, right? So let's not close the door on other people. I believe through the prayer and discernment that I've done the past couple months since I discovered that I was going to get to come serve here, I believe that there are people in this town that are going to be here that we haven't met yet. I believe that some of those 9,000 people that aren't in worship today, some of them are going to join us. And some of them will look like us and act like us and think like us. And some of them aren't going to. I truly believe that. I hope that's true. I hope that we get to minister to a whole new group of people in the coming months and years. I hope that we find new friends to serve. And to do that, we are going to have to be welcoming. We are going to have to practice being welcoming to those that we are not necessarily comfortable with. No matter who they are, no matter where they come from, we are called to welcome them just as we do Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you join me in our prayer hymn? It's number 2215, The Carer's Chorus. Responding when I say, Lord, in your mercy, with hear our prayers. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you today. 
praying for the Holy Church, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. Lord, in your mercy. For Reuben signs our bishop, for all bishops and pastors, and for all the holy people of God. Lord, in your mercy. For all who believe in God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be as one the way that the Spirit, the Father, and you are one. Lord, in your mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. For those who do not yet believe, and those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. For the peace of the world, that the spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. Lord, in your mercy. For those in positions of public trust, for the leaders of our country, especially our president, for leaders of our state and our community, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. Lord, in your mercy. For all who live and work in this community and the communities around us. Lord, in your mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. For refugees and prisoners. For all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. Lord, in your mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present and those who are absent, for those that we have yet to meet that will join us, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy. For our enemies and those who wish to harm us, for all that we have harmed or injured or offended, Lord, in your mercy. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives. Lord, in your mercy. For those that we lifted up earlier in the service, and for those that we have kept in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. It is through the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus the Christ, that we make these petitions and continue our prayer in the way that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue to worship, we have an opportunity to give back a little of what God has blessed us with, to help support the ministries of this church, both within our walls and without. So will the ushers please come forward and collect our tithes and offerings.
join in the, off, in the prayer of dedication. O oh God, accept these gifts as symbols of our commitment to live in response to your word and to work towards a world where your love and peace are held as the highest of values. Amen. Please be seated. And join me in the closing hymn, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.